Hello artists, I am Ms. Strand and I am the visual art teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School. I am so glad to be with you here today in my studio, also known as my living room, making art. I have to let you know that we teachers miss you. We really do. We think about you, we wonder about you, we have all sorts of well wishes for you, and we're really excited for when we get to see you again and hear all about how your life has been. But in the meantime, we can make art. And today I am going to teach you about an artist whose name is Alexander Calder. And then I'm going to guide you through an activity that uses line to create a drawing. For materials, you will need a pencil or pen and a piece of paper. You might want to use crayons, markers, or colored pencils if you have them. That's a bonus, but you don't need them. One of the things I really enjoy about the work of Alexander Calder is the way that he uses line. Whether it is in a drawing, a painting, or a sculpture, he uses line to create shape. And with that shape, he creates color. Sometimes his lines are thin, and sometimes his lines are thick. Sometimes they are straight, and sometimes they are curved. We can always see this use of line, shape, and color. Have you noticed that a lot of his work uses black and white and the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue? Now I will show you some ideas that you can use in your project. Then it will be your turn to make art. In art, we have a number of different types of lines that we can use. Straight, zigzag, curly, wavy, curved, short, thick, thin. And when we use a lot of different types, we call that variety. One thing about being inspired by an artist is that we can use some of their ideas, but we always want to include some of our own as well, just to make it our own work. So I'm using Alexander Calder's lines to create shape. I can use color pencil or marker to color in my shapes. Then I'm using some of his bright colors that he likes to use, but I'm also going to add some colors that are different than Alexander Calder would use, and that are colors that I would use, like brown and gray. I like how Alexander Calder uses black to make his shape stand out, so I'm going to try that too. If you are using pencil only, you can create variety by using different values. And what I mean by value is darks and lights. I can color this shape in light. I can color in this shape dark. I can color this shape in medium. I can color this shape as a gradient where it goes from dark on one end to light on the other. You might notice that as I'm shading, I have my pencil angled so that I'm actually shading with the side of my pencil. If I shade with the tip of my pencil, it makes for a kind of messy line. But if I angle the pencil so it's tipped more on its side, I will get a much smoother texture. I can see exactly how dark can I make 
this shape by adding layers and layers of dark shade. If you happen to have paints with you, you could finish off this drawing with paint, but if you don't, that's okay because your art is going to look fabulous. Here's one way to use paint. Remember when you're using watercolor paints, you're only using a few drops at a time. Another thing to remember is if you're painting with yellow, it's best to start with that color before your water gets dirty. Remember not to scrub when you're painting. If you're starting to scrub with your painting, it means that you either need more water or more paint. I wonder what would happen if I painted watercolor on top of colored pencil. Oh no, I just put my hand down on this part and it spread. That looks kind of cool actually. I'm gonna call that a beautiful oops. In fact, you know what I can do with my beautiful oops? Is make it less of an oops and more of a beautiful. Do I have to paint in every single shape? No, but it should look finished. It shouldn't look like I just got tired of painting. It should look like it was a part of my plan to have some of the shapes stay white. You can see that when I add more water to my brush, the color becomes lighter. I'm going to mix two colors to make a secondary color. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four shapes that I'm keeping white. Okay, artists, now it's your turn to make a line drawing. And here's a reminder about the materials that you will need. Let's get to work.